Hi there, I'm going to be talking about West Side Training Programming in this presentation. So the West Side Training Method, which is also known as the Conjugate Method, was developed by Louis Simmons. The West Side Barbell Gym based in Culver City, California has created more world record holders than any other single gym in the history of powerlifting. Following up on this huge success, the West Side Method's reputation has dramatically increased. Throughout the years, though, a lot of powerlifters have used and attempted the West Side Training Method, but over the last few years, the method has fallen out of favour. The methods used in the West Side Barbell Gym were created through ex ex extra population of principles from old Eastern Bloc science literature. As a result of this, parts of the West Side Training Program have evolved over the years through testing on what works and what does not. The West Side Training Program has taken inspiration from three sources, and they are the Russian weightlifting methods, the Bulgarian weightlifting methods, and Anna and A.S. Pulikin's work on the optimal sets and reps for improvement of strength to an Olympic weightlifter. A.S. Pulikin's work I was on the I was on the Olympic lifts, defined as a snatch, clean, and jerk. So comparing the differences between training. Uh, powerlifting and weightlifting and the high burnout rate of the Bulgarian system, it was then decided that it would not be beneficial for the athletes to go to the maximum effort in every training session. S. Pilipin's work was then added to the program. After studying hundreds of weightlifters, he found ideal combinations of sets and reps that best facilitated bar speed, technical development and strength in the Olympic lifter. So, this is A.S. Prilipin's chart, which is used in the West Side Training Programme. Um, it prescribes sets and reps for the optimal training effect in various intensity uh, zones and was designed by observing high qualified weightlifters. This table provides sets and reps that help the weightlifter maintain optimal technique, te uh, uh, sorry, technique and speed. As such, uh, it's important to consider and be cautious when trying to apply these, this chart to pure strength development with other exercises, and certainly with the goal of hypertrophy. In a recent analysis, Michael Tushisher, 2018, stated that the, tar that, that the chart is not developed for powerlifters and will have limited diet applicability. A much better way is to extract the useful information from it and apply the principles rather, the, the, rather the, than the chart directly. If you analyse the training logs of elite weightlifters and try to create something that's generalised to other people, then there will be outliers almost by definition. In fact, the, the, the analysis is done on the outliers, so the odds of it applying well to the average lifter is quite slim. Mike Tushisher, 2018, also said that Air Spilipin's chart was developed from, from an, an analysis of the trainer logs of high-level Russian weightlifters. Weightlifting and powerlifting share similarities, but they are not the same sport. Now, Westside Training Program is developed specifically for the power, specifically for powerlifting. So there is a debate if Air's Prisoner's chart is entirely relevant to West Side Training Programming in the first place. So Air's Prisoner's work inspired the dynamic effort method, and this involves single repetitions, double repetitions, and triple repetitions of 50 to 60 percent of your max of your one rep max. This lies alone theoretically allows for better recovery after the max effort sessions while still making the lifter stronger because maximal bar speed and technique are maintained and improved. In simple terms, you recover and get faster on the dynamic effort days and you wear out on this CNS on the maximum effort days. So the program of West Side Training Program is this, but it's firstly really important to note that there is, that there, um, is no official West Side Training Program. The template is a simple structure and nothing more. No two people do the West Side Training Program in the same way. The program is intended to be highly individualised and customised. This can lead to a few grey areas which isn't accurate and precise enough for an, an effective and coherent training program. So during the week there is a dynamic effort method day and maximum so maximal method effort day for, the, for both the upper and lower body. The program is thus a four times per week upper to lower body split. The dynamic effort bench days involve you using 50 to 60% of your raw max for six to eight sets of three. 
The dynamic effort at lower body days involves using 40 to 60 percent of your raw max for 10 to 12 sets of two on the box squat. Some versions also call for six to 10 sets for of, of, of one rep on the deadlift using 60 to 85 percent of your max. Bands and chains are used to accommodate resistance and prevent you from slowing down near the top of the top of the rep. Speed is supposed to be your guide here. You should be able to move the weight as fast as you can move the empty bar, but only when you're um, only when you apply your hardest effort. The dynamic effort work is periodized in three waves. That is, you start at fifty percent for one week, you go to fifty-five percent the next week and then you finish with 60% on the third week and for the fourth week you repeat the whole cycle again. On the max effort days you work up to, to, to max single any variation on the bench, press, squat, deadlift or good morning on the respective upper body and lower body days in the program. You should use a different variation every single week, sometimes the book says every two weeks and the goal is to work up to 90% plus. Generally Protocol involves taking one rep at 90% of your PR, attempting to break your PR by a small margin on the next rep, and then taking perhaps one more rep if you feel you have an additional bigger PR. In this manner, each max effort day is generally two to three reps at 90% plus. So Westside Training Program is, is a program developed explicitly for powerlifting, as mentioned, and there are clear and concise plans for, for, for meat peaking. Namely, Westside Training Programming uses the Circumax phase. The Circumax phase begins six weeks out from the meet and replaces the normal dynamic effort method days. Using the squat as an example, with 50% band tension, the lifter spends three weeks doing double reps between 90 and 97%. This is incredibly difficult, and but does prepare the lifter for the upcoming meet. The final three weeks are spent deloading and peaking. It is, it is important to note that max effort day work is often substituted for rep work, sled pulling and other less intensive uh, means during the circumax phase. In the last week, meet week, after the circumax workouts, only short, simple workouts are, in, are, are uh, prescribed to enhance lower, sorry, to enhance blood flow um, and their perform. These workouts should include uh, um, also reverse hypers, glute hand raises and abs ex exercises. So periodization, um, it, in other words, hypertrophy and strength are developed sequentially along the intensity continuum. It's essentially block periodization. In West Side training programming, you have four days that are dedicated to certain qualities. You have a dynamic effort day which is dedicated to speed and max effort day which is dedicated to strength. On both days, high reps are used on assistance movements to improve hypertrophy. Westside training programming in terms of periodization is periodized most appropriately for an intermediate lifter. This is due to the program featuring a weekly mesocycle, just like the Texas method. Even though you're manipulating intensity from week to week on the speed work, the volume is held constant, so you're not really varying programming significantly from week to week. Exercise selection is known and has proven to vary greatly in Westside training programming, but this is not the same thing as programmatic variation in intensity and volume. Just because there's a different exercise each week does not mean you're introducing a new element of periodization. Reynolds 2020 stated that an undulating periodization method for the strength phase may be more beneficial and effective alternative to the Westside training program in periodized strength phase. And in terms of talking about the program and the use of performance enhancement drugs. The reason why advanced athletes need periods of emphasis on one quality at a time is due to only having a limited recovery ability and as you become more advanced you need more and more time to improve a quality. If you try to improve all qualities simultaneously the amount of work it would require would outstrip your ability to recover. As opposed to relying on more complex periodization models to make progress and manipulating volume from week to week the individuals take performance-enhancing drugs to recover faster in this, or could take those performance-enhancing drugs in this program to recover faster. This is not a desirable thing to do, 
and there must be consideration to use other training programs that may work better without the need for performance enhancing drugs, such as the Texas method or the Donut Barbell training program, um, which is composed and, and created by Jake Downs based in Cardiff. So programming. Again, the Westside Training Programming does not feature significant variation in volume or intensity from week to week. You max out on the max effort day every single week. You hold the volume constant on dynamic effort day by reducing your sets as the intensity goes up and then you end up by end up doing more or less the same volume every week, thus limited if any improvement at all. In a lot of ways, this, is con this contrast is, is very similar to, to the Texas method. A more effective way, as previously mentioned, or a more effective alternative to Westside training program in terms of periodization and, and variation in volume and intensity, and specifically powerlifting, could be the Donut Barbell training program created by a competitive powerlifter by the name of Jake Downs based in Cardiff, Wales, as mentioned. Although Westside training programming was designed explicitly for powerlifting, the main criticisms mainly have to do with specificity. Number one, how can a powerlifter technically master their raw squat form without practicing the movement itself. Number two, if you're, con if you're constantly using touch and go bench presses, your training is not as specific as it could be to the competition version of the movement. Number three, instead of avoiding deadlifts altogether, it could be better to address the flaws in the, in the individual's fatigue management structure so that the deadlift deadlifts can continue to be entrained. Number four, the primary purpose of bands and chains are to, are to provide a combating resistance. During any lift, there is going to be a sticking point. This is the area where the individual's force production is the least and is generally the point of most, of, sorry, of, of worst mechanical leverage. Band and chains make the lift more difficult at the top of the movement. The problem with this is that the raw lifters, sorry, weight lifters, have sticking points at the bottom of the movement, so not recommended for raw weight lifters. And Western training programming employs a form of progressive overload. As you set new maxes, the weights you use for dynamic effort increase. As you get stronger, the weights you go for on max effort a method day sh um, also should increase. In other words, you overload by ha handling heavier weights over time. So Westside Training Programming Fatigue Management is essentially um, is, an, is an essential system. Essentially uses an upper and lower body split and, and, and making sure that the volume intensity variation is, is correct from workout to workout. Again, in, in, comp in, in comparison to the Texas method, Westside Training and Programming employs a high volume, low medium intensity day and a low volume intensity day. Sorry, low volume high intensity day. This is a good way for early lifters to make sure that they are making progress weekly without failing to recover after each week. So, conclusions. Westside training programming ideas aren't entirely relevant to increasing raw powerlifting uh, performance. Westside training programming, while heavy on the science, misapplies a variety of different training methods to powerlifting. AS Prilipin's chart, which is being used in Westside training programming, was analysed in a different sport, weightlifting. So it has serious limitations when it comes to powerlifting training. The best parts of the programme seem to come from various Eastern Bloc systems such as the Texas method, uh, method and the Russian weightlifting dyna dyna dynamo club and all put together actually just becomes confusing rather than a coherent optimal system of training. As mentioned Westside training program is just not specific enough for raw powerlifters. Can a raw powerlifter succeed on a program that doesn't use the three squats or how a raw powerlifter can achieve an optimal deadlift results without the deadlifting? How can a raw powerlifter perfect the technique when they're constantly using bands and chains which can change the bar mechanics of the lift? Getting the bar mechanics of the individual correct before loading the body weight, sorry, loading the body with weight is essential. Finally, how is an individual going to maximise strength gains by never working in an 80 to 90 percent range of the programme itself? Having said this, that there is some things that Westside training does well, but the real question is whether an individual will get stronger at an optimal rate. And for the reasons I've already mentioned, uh, the answer to that is a definite no. As mentioned, there are better options for, for raw powerlifters than using the Westside Training Programming method, such as the Donut Barbell Training Programme by com competitive powerlifter Jake Downs based on the programme's periodization and variation in volume and intensity for scientifically 
proven results in powerlifting. Thank you.